all you lovely kings, queens, and in-betweens, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be talking about You Can't Say Um. You Can't Say Um is a party game by Big Potato Games for 4-10 to 10 players. It should take about 20 minutes to play. Your goal is to describe random pairs of words to your team without umming, awing, or making any sort of verbal brain fart. Each time a pair of words is guessed correctly, that team moves one space along the board. The rival team moves along the board every time they hear slip up and ring the bell. Teams take turns describing and ringing the bell until one of them wins by reaching the end of the board. Setup for the game is super easy, barely an inconvenience. The first thing you're going to do is split the group into two teams and place your chosen piece on the match and go space on the board. From there, each team draws six roll cards and secretly looks at them. They pick three cards to pass to the other team and discard the remaining three. Each team places these three new roll cards along their side of the board without looking at them. And you're just going to do your best to match up those new rules to each of the colored yellow squares on either side of the board. From there, you're ready to play. At this point, you're going to pick a team to go first. You could do this by rolling a die, playing rock, paper, scissors, or just arbitrary choosing which team goes first. And then one player on that team is going to be chosen as the describer for the round. They're going to secretly draw a card from each deck of words A and B, and their mission is to describe the strange combination of words to their team without umming or awing or saying any part of the word on each card. Hesitating, basically pausing in between speaking, is perfectly acceptable. It is important, however, to avoid all brain fart noises. Examples include um, er, uh, and ah. Uh. Meanwhile, the team opposite them place the timer and the bell in front of them, ready to ring the bell if they hear the describer slip up. When both teams are ready, you're going to flip the timer and the describer starts by describing word A to their team, followed by word B. If the team shouts out both words together and in the right order, they move their piece one space along the board. The describer quickly discards the word cards, grabs a new pair, and play goes on. This is going to continue until the timer runs out and then the other team will take its turn. The team with the bell moves their piece one space along the board every time they correctly ring the bell. After 45 seconds is up, as I mentioned previously, they will pass the bell and timer to the other team, choose a player to be the describer, and begin a new round once the timer is flipped over. So just to sum things up, scoring works thusly. One move for every correct ding and one move for every pair of words guessed correctly. Let's take a moment to talk about the rule cards. As soon as a team reaches a rule card marker on the board, so any of those yellow spaces, they flip the corresponding rule card and it takes effect immediately. For the rest of the game, that team must obey this new rule. If the other team catch them breaking it, they ring the bell and move one space along the board. It's important to note that the no umming or awing rule remains for the whole game. Every new rule introduced by rule card also remains until the end of the game, but only applies to the team that flipped it. Essentially, you add more rules as the game goes along, and the game gets harder and harder to play. Welcome to the danger zone. The danger zone is marked by exclamation points on the board. When a team reaches those spaces, they've entered the danger zone. Now, no one on their team is allowed to um or ah even while guessing. If the other team catches them doing this, they can ring the bell and move their piece forward one space. And now for everyone's favorite part of the how to play, winning. The win condition is that you have to reach the end of the board. The first team to do this is the winner of the game. A few more important things to note are that you don't stop describing. Remember, even if the bell rings, the describer must keep describing the same pair of cards. There is no skipping allowed. It also might be good to appoint a referee if you have an odd number of players. This is very useful as they can keep time, move the pieces along the board, and adjudicate on any controversial points, while you can concentrate on listening out for any umming, awing, or other rule breaking. Now that you all know how to play, I'm going to take a few moments to give my final thoughts. Now that I've taken the time to explain the premise behind the game and show you all how to play, I want to take some time to give this game a review. For whatever reason, I wound up with the UK version of the game. Don't ask me how, but that is what is currently in my possession, and I am in fact American. What I did notice while I was playing is that some words are not common to the American English lexicon since what I have is the UK version. And these words are very hard, if not impossible, for the average person to guess. Some examples of these words include cat flap and vicar. So ultimately, I would suggest that if you want to pick up this game, you make sure you get the version that is ideal for your country of origin. The next thing I want to note is that each component is high quality. The cards are printed on thick cardboard-like paper, and the bell seems like a bell you'd find in an old hotel, but fashioned to fit in with the game. My only complaints are that the bell ringing is very obnoxious, and the A and B cards are a bit small, making them a smidge larger, I think, would make it much easier to pick them up. The game is also table, budget, and family friendly. It's easy to get back into the box and doesn't take up much space on your shelf. It's also easy to teach and to learn, although mastering it can be rough, especially when you add in more rules as the game progresses. Compound 
challenging the difficulty of the original rules for many players. I like that this game can support a large number of players, but want to acknowledge that like all games, especially party games, one's experience playing is largely determined by the people you are playing with. If you have people who aren't into it, who are maybe a bit too rough around the edges, etc., then it's probably not going to be much fun or any fun at all. Finally, I think the game has a lot of replayability because there are so many combinations of cards you can get. This includes both rules and the A and B clue cards. There are so many ways to describe the same word and numerous rules that would adjust how you could safely describe them that you aren't likely to get the same experience twice. However, I think the average younger player is at a disadvantage in this game since they haven't experienced as much as the average older player, so this should be taken into account when making teams. Furthermore, adding in more rule adjustment and A and B word cards down the line could continue to keep this game fresh and fun. Overall, I think it's a great little party game. You should check it out and try it out with your friends and family. And that concludes my review. I hope you liked it and hope you'll take a moment to let me know how I did down below in the comments. Also, have you played this game? Which version did you get? I always like to know these things. And if you like what you saw here today, please smash that like button until it's blue. Subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know what's up. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Hi, Tasia Valenza, aka Poison Ivy, and you've just been watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.